Hi, my name is Seth, and thanks for watching my videos. In this video, we're, we're going to be talking about Cisco 5505. Um, that is their um, security uh, appliance. They call it the ASA 5505 or the Adaptive Security Appliance. And it's in a it's a series of um, different hardware uh, specs that you can get. Um, this is called the 55 series, 5500 series. So you got the 5510, the 5505, and some other ones. Um, and all it is is basically their firewall. Um, it used to be the PICS, um, and I'm not sure if they still have the PICS or not. But it used to be the PIC, um, but now majority of the places use the um, the 50, say ASA 55, 5500 series. If you go onto their website, you can see that um, they have a lot of, uh, if you type in 5505 or just 5500, you get some real good informative um, uh, articles and how-tos. And this is the uh, 5505. It's a small one. There is a. Um, it's labeled from port zero to seven. So zero, which is the outside port, and the seven internal ports, and the last two, six and seven, are um, PoE power over Ethernet. So you know if you have a PoE access point or another switch or something, you know you can. Uh, this will work over that. So the last two are PoE. POE. When you buy the package, it comes with obviously the, all the cables you see here: Ethernet cable, the console cable, and the power cables. And a documentation which I don't think anybody really reads. Um, and so this is how it looks like. You know, you have the ISP connection, and so from uh, from your ISP, you'll plug into the outside port, which is port zero, and then you have the seven internal. Uh, ports as you can see you know uh, PoE phone so if you have a Cisco phone you can plug into and your different devices you can plug this right into and uh, this will kind of go over the step-by-step uh, tutorial as to you know how to how to do the initial installation the um, firmware update how to do VPN tunnels and so on and so forth. So we're going to be talking about how to um, how to do all that, and I'll show you how to how to factory default this, how to upgrade the f uh, firmware on this, how to initially set this up, the different how to uh, set up the internal network, and then the uh, subsequent you know how to set up the VPN tunnel. The uh, VPN tunnels to different locations and so on and so forth. So we're gonna we're gonna cover this in this series of tutorials. So this is this is part one of the 5505 series, um, and this is this is the um, and this is the beginning. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. I've already connected my console cable, and I'm connected to my um, my device. When you when, when you open this up and it's brand new from the factory, you'll see it listed as Cisco. ASA and you can just hit enter um, you hit EN to enable and it's going to ask for a password well there is no password you just hit enter and you see there's a, a little uh, pound the number sign after it that means you're in the administrative mode um, so here what you get the first thing you need to do um, you you know there's there's what I like about the 5505 is you can use the ASDM uh, which is the GUI um, portion in which we're going to be using majority of the time. You can also use obviously the traditional CLI, you know, the uh, command prompt mode to um, to program this. But I personally like doing the AS, the um, the GUI, the ASDM, and uh, yeah, that's what I've. Been setting up these 5505s and that's so why I feel much comfortable with that. So the first thing you want to do is just make sure that, uh, um, in our case, if this is you know like this device is, was previously used, there's a, there was a previous configuration on this. 
um, which I want to do is I want to factory default it so I can have a fresh clean install and then we'll use the uh, GUI portion to connect to it. So the first thing I'll do is I hit config T to get into the um, configuration mode and here I'll type in config um, factory dash default um, and it's going to go through and um, basically set this to factory default so you'll see it will automatically switch the uh, interface Ethernet ports all the the all the internal ports to uh, open and kind of clear them and set up the internal um, network for us right here 192.168.1.1 um, uh, network um, there you go so now it's set is basic clean and factory defaulted so now what I want to do is I want to save this um, factory default so what I'll do is you say save I'm sorry reload save and um, config no confirm and so it's going to save this configuration into the running config it's going to reboot it and it's going to come up and then we'll go ahead and connect to um, the GUI portion of it like it was brand new and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and set this up from uh, from the start then. So now, if you remember, when we factory defaulted this, it set the internal interface to 192.168.1.1. That was the default. And so I open up the web browser and I type in HTTPS 192.168.1.1. 1.1 and hit enter and you're going to be prompted here for to continue with the certificate uh, you have to make sure that obviously your internal network is set to 192.168 interface if not temporarily static IP your machine to it or you can connect directly to the ASA device because um, by default DHCP is enabled on it and you can connect that way also so now that we have this window open I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue alright so it's using ASDM 6.3.3 I believe that's the latest so we're gonna hit run open and it uses Java to uh, enable the uh, the GUI portion Security interface, that's fine. Hit yes. And it's going to prompt that a couple of times. Yes. All right. Because there's no password, we're just going to um, make sure the password, username, and password fields are empty and hit OK. And OK, so as when we first log in, you'll see that there is basic information that it gives us on the screen. Um, tells us that our host name is Cisco SA, which is the default. The version of the ASA we're using is 8.2.3. Um, there's multiple revisions. There's a 1, there's a 2, there's a 3. There's a 8.3 out now, which is a little different. Um, not too much, but um, the how, the way how you do NATs are a bit confusing in it. So I kind of like using the 8.2. The ASDM version is 6.3, and that's what this is. We're using the ASDM version, the GUI portion. It has 512 megabytes of RAM built right in. Uh, 128 megabyte of uh, flash memory. It's just basic information it gives you. Um, you know, enable, enable uh, logging. It tells you, okay, you know, this is my machine. I'm connected to it right now. So it kind of gives you basic information here. So the first thing you want to do, um, if you want to set this up for a specific uh, location your location or remote location you can hit on configuration all right you're going to click on interfaces and here you'll see the two interfaces now you can double click on the internal interface and change it this way you can use a static IP you can obtain it from a DHCP if you have another if you have disconnected to a different you know a DHCP you can use that or you can use 
PPOE is going to ask for the um, your username and password. Majority of the time, you're going to be doing static or DHCP. Um, you can, so you can go through this way and configure it. Um, that's the outside interface. Same thing. You can use PPOE, uh, DHCP, or static IP. Your security level. So you can use the, you, you can use this. Or what you can do is you can go to wizard and say startup configuration and just leave this as is and just hit next and here you can call this your you know um, test Cisco ASA and this is basically whatever name host you want to give it if you're if you're setting this up for a specific location you know you can set it up for a specific location and give it the name hit next here, how many do you want to enable DMZ? By default, you can have three VLANs set up. Um, if you don't set up the DMZ or the third VLAN now, it's going to be difficult to do later on, but it's doable. Um, and you can see that it sets up the security levels automatically for you to 50, to 100, and to zero. Obviously, the outside interface security level is set to zero because you don't want anything from the outside to come in. But you do want the internal stuff, which is set to 100, to go in, uh, to go out. So it's up to you. Um, I usually say no to this, but obviously it's going to be dependent on you how you want to set this. So we'll leave the default VLANs the way how it's set up here. We'll hit next. Leave this as is. This is this allocation of different um, switches, uh, switch ports. How do you want to set up which VLAN? Typically, you want to leave this as default. Hit next. Here, if you have a specific IP address for the outside, you want to give this. You could, um, you know, whatever your outside IP address may be, twelve dot ten dot twenty dot fifty nine. Two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five zero. I'm just making this up. Whatever it could be, anything. And the internal, if you want to leave one nine two one six eight, you're more than welcome to do it, or you can change it to whatever you know. Ten dot whatever uh, one seventy two dot sixteen. Oops, um, one seventy two dot whatever. I mean, you can you can change this to however you like. Um, You know, we'll just go with the default. Um, obviously, a different subnet mask. Hit next. Enable DSCP server on this interface. Well, you could. You can set up uh, DHCP by default. I believe it's up to 30 devices you can have. Um, and depending on what your IP scope range might be, you, then you'll have the different. Uh, beginning IP address and the different ending. We'll just leave this as a default. Hit next. Um, this is NAT configuration, how you want to set up NAT. I will go over this a little bit more. Uh, so I'll just leave this as default. Hit next. Uh, here, this is the um, which networks you want to allow to use the uh, ASDM or SSH or Telnet remotely. This is for administrative access. So what you want to do here is if you have changed the internal network, for example, if if you guys are using 192 network at work and you've set this to 192, then you're fine. But if you changed it, you want to change this then. I'm going to hit add and you're going to specify um, the inside interface. You know whatever IP range that you have set it to, you want to set that here. If it was a 10. IP, a 172. IP, or whatever you want to change, you want to make that change here to reflect it. And obviously, you want to do dot zero, so you want the whole network. So any devices within your network you're sitting on, you can connect them to your ASA and remotely administer it. 
you are, you can also do outside so if you're going to be remotely administering this then you and you know what location you're going to be in you can specify that IP or that range here so you can remotely then administer this device very important uh, to set this or else you're not going to be able to access this like I said by default it's set to the internal and uh, you're more than welcome to change that but be aware though that you need to set this we'll leave in our scenario where since we're doing a test we'll leave this as is we'll hit next here it kind of tells you the overview okay you know make sure everything's set up it is hit finish it's going to go through and it's going to go ahead and save this to a running config and um, may or may not reboot the machine in our case because everything is set as is we didn't really make any changes um, as you saw here see how it changed the outside to the in the IP address we specified um, and then down here you got this little save icon well that means that uh, you need to save this to the running config or to the flash so we're going to hit save and then it's going to go through and finalize that configuration for it now it's finalized so once you go through this portion then you need to come down to routing important so you're going to click on static routes now if you have static routes you need to set those here to different you know networks that you're going to be setting up and you want static routes set so you need to set those here the most basic and important static route you want to set is your um, default gateway very important so you're going to click on static routes add you're going to set this to outside and you want anything to um, to go to uh, the gateway so that means that anything that's connected on any IP range that's connected on um, on this interface will be able to go out to the uh, to the internet uh, and vice versa um, will be able to come from the outside to uh, administer this device so if I'm in the XYZ location and I want to remotely connect to this well if I don't have this set I'm not going to be able to get to you so you need to set your your default uh, I'm sorry your gateway IP here and that's going to be obviously provided to you by your ISP whatever the default gateway that they've given you um, whatever you know whatever it is that they've given you so you need to make sure you set this and then you hit OK apply it see it's not and then save it okay so now that's set so that means now we can remotely um, administer this device and the users who are connected internally will be able to go out to the internet as you can see it it changed our host name and you can set your clock and you know what time and so on and so forth so well so that's all set so the next thing you want to do after after you um, give it the basics 